Well, hey guys, it's Viejo here, and we are in the second week of May in 2023. Got a nice day here on the central coast of California. A little breezy outside. In fact, we had a high wind advisory for parts of the county today, but it's not too bad here. I got 68 degrees uh, here in the garage at close to 60% relative humidity, and it's uh, sunny and a little bit warmer than that, probably 70 outside, so beautiful day. Hey, uh, welcome to the first episode of Henry's and Handguns. All right, so this is a new endeavor I'm embarking on here. Let me give you the quick backstory. I've got uh, several Henry uh, rifles, um, big boys, right, brass receivers, and um, some of them are in pistol calibers and some of them are not. Uh, out at my local gun club where you've seen me shooting uh, frequently already in the Moldy Monday series, we are not allowed to shoot rifle calibers except rimfire and pistol caliber rifles. So we can shoot those indoors at, the, at our local range. For me to shoot outdoors um, is a hundred mile round trip, so I don't do that very often. So what I'm going to do with this series is just kind of uh, for me, actually, um, but I thought I might bring you guys along uh, as well. And I haven't taken these uh, handgun caliber Henrys out of the safe for quite a while, some of them. So um, I thought, well, I'm going to bring them out. I'm going to go shoot them. I'm going to take ammo that I can fire the same round in a handgun, single action, as I shoot in the lever action rifle. So uh, we're going to kind of start with the smaller calibers and sort of work work our, our way up. Um, but before we get any further into that, let's take a look at the players that we're going to be using. The first one we're going to do is the one we're going to talk about today, and that's the Henry Golden Boy. This is actually my most recent addition to my Henry collection, and we'll be pairing that with the Ruger Single Six, both uh, chambered in 22 long rifle. Next up, will be the 38 357 Henry, and we will be pairing that with the Cimarron Pistolero in 357. And that brings us down to the 44. So we have the Henry and 44 Special 44 Mag, and that's going to be paired with the nice Ruger Super Blackhawk in 44 Mag. And this one's cheating a little bit because it's not really a Henry. This is uh, Uberti's copy of the uh, original Henry, model 1860, chambered in 4440. And a revolver that we'll use is also a Cimarron. That is the 1875 Remington replica, also in 4440. And then finally, we will be doing the 45 Colt. And the revolver we'll use is the Cimarron 1873 Single Action Army. Okay, so there, there's the five that we're going to use. And I, I'm not going to do these in rapid succession. They're going to be relatively short videos. This will be the longest one today with all this introductory stuff. Um, all I'm going to do is show you the firearms we're going to use. Going to go to the range, take a couple video clips of me shooting them, and then come back and wrap it up. And I'm, I'm thinking that the whole thing's going to be under 10 minutes per episode. So uh, without any further ado, let's get into the uh, firearms that we're going to use for this episode. And that's going to be the Henry Golden Boy in 22 long rifle and my old Ruger Single 6. Let's go look at them. They're over here. Prior to the video, both of these firearms have been cleared. Okay, so there's nothing there. And in the rifle, and we have no ammunition anywhere around the bench or in the near vicinity. So everything is clear and safe. All right, so let's take a close look. And again, this guy is clear, right? And un unlike a single action army, 
in which case you have to open the loading port and pull the hammer back part way uh, in order to rotate the cylinder. With this old single six, you don't have to do that. All you have to do to get the cylinder to rotate is to just open the loading port. And this gun does have a transfer bar system in it. Okay, so as the hammer comes back, see that transfer bar coming up, and what's going to happen then is that hammer goes forward, strikes the transfer bar, and that's what pushes the firing pin forward, okay, to touch off the round. If the hammer is down after you pull the trigger, that transfer bar has retracted, and the hammer will not reach the firing pin all by itself. It has to hit the transfer bar. So that's a the built-in safety in this particular one. So, And you can kind of take a look at the sights while we're here. It has a decent sight picture to it. Um, okay, we do have adjustable sights on this one. Okay, we're adjustable for elevation and windage. Okay. So that's a nice plus, and ejecting the rounds is accomplished thusly with, an, with the ejector rod. You can see it coming all the way down through there, okay? So you would advance to the next one, okay, eject that round, advance to the next one, and so forth. So it's a nice little revolver, like I said, though, it's, even, with that, even with that nice long barrel, Okay, not particularly accurate. And this revolver weighs just a little over uh, two pounds empty, two and a quarter pounds, something like that. And this is a six and a half inch barrel, okay, from the end of the muzzle all the way to the front of the cylinder. And you can see in there, there's not much of a flash gap in there. When it comes time to remove the cylinder for cleaning, fairly simple process. We open the loading gate. We've got a cross bolt here that retains the base pin. So we'll depress that cross bolt, pull the base pin out, and then our cylinder just drops back out like that. Okay. To reassemble it then, just the reverse, roll our cylinder into place, and the cross bolt, or excuse me, the base pin goes in. And sometimes you got to wiggle the cylinder just a little bit, and you can hear that base pin then snap into place with the cross bolt. Okay, and then we always rotate it a couple times, give it a function check with a hammer, and we're in good shape. Um, to disassemble it completely, um, the grips are easy enough to remove. We got one screw right there, and then to take the rest of the firearm apart, we've got three screws down here on the bottom and these two back here, okay? There's a little bit of a process to that. Um, you can't mix up some of these screws, you gotta get them right. And if you need to see how to do that, you can go onto Ruger's website and they've got a very nice training video there on how to do that with, with this uh, single action revolver. All right, and once again, we're nice and safe here, okay? We got nothing in our chamber there and nothing in the tubular magazine. This is a six and a half pound uh, firearm. We got the 20 inch barrel. Now Henry makes this in a lot of different models. Okay, there's a big selection of uh, 22 lever action rifles available from Henry USA. Uh, this guy is a tubular fed. Let's see if I can get this down here where you can see this. Tubular fed magazine, okay, there's no side port for loading, okay, and this rod is, is typical on all the Henry big boys, okay, we got a spring in here, so here's our loading port, now Henry claims this uh, will take 22 short longs as well as long rifles, but I've never put anything but long rifles through here, you know, mostly because that's all I got, <laughs> uh, so I can't vouch for its ability to feed and cycle with 22 shorts. I have put a, a number of different kinds of ammunition in here um, and it's all fed uh, and cycled uh, 
just fine, no ejection problems or anything with any of the 22 long rifle ammo that I've put in here. Um, all the way from uh, CCI quiets up to stingers and mini mags. Okay, this will not handle 22 Magnum. Uh, if one needs to unload this, okay, our follower rod comes out and we just tip it up and catch the ammo as it comes out of the tube. One thing that I'll, I'll mention, and you'll hear me talk about this because I have launched these, it won't do it when there's no ammo in here, but um, when you get 10 rounds in here and, and this spring on the plunger is compressed, um, there's quite a bit of spring tension there. And if you let go of our tab here, before you get it locked in, you can launch that out of there like an arrow. And I've done that okay. a couple of times, actually. So we pay attention to those. Um, if it comes time to cleaning this guy and it's time to uh, get the rifled barrel good and clean and you want to clean from the breech end, it's not difficult. We've got four screws, two on each side of the receiver cover and then this one back here that locks the tang into the stock so that's that all five of those have to come out then this just lifts out and off and you can remove the bolt then you have to pull the hammer back but you remove the bolt and then you can clean from this end and it's not hard you just you know with these brass screws you want to get the right sized um, driver for that something like we might have here in our wheeler kit okay one that's going to get in here and fit these guys properly nice and tight both laterally and you know this way so use the right one and you don't get them all marred up we've got buckhorn sights okay that are adjustable for elevation um, it's dovetailed so if you need to adjust for windage and this one actually, I think, does need a little bit of windage adjustment. Um, but you have to drift this from one side or the other with, you know, your nylon uh, drift pin. Front sight is a brass bead, which is pretty easy to pick up. And as we look down here through those buckhorn sights, okay. Let's see if I can get you. Yeah, pretty hard to get a good shot down there of the sights. Come on, where are you? There you go. You kind you kind of line that front bead up with that diamond, and that's going to put you on target. So the wood on this guy is pretty nice. We got nice. Wallet furniture on here, typical of what Henry does. Our butt plate is metal, okay? So we got a brass butt plate there. Underneath down here, we got brass again. Okay, and the forearm is walnut. And I, I like that, it's nice, nice lumber that Henry puts on these rifles. As far as uh, safety features go on this, as you can see, there's no hammer block in there like we had on the revolver. What we do have is a quarter cock position right to there. And in that position, the trigger will not fire, okay? So you can establish that quarter cock either from full cock or with the hammer full forward back to that first audible click. And again, our trigger will not fire. If you're already cocked, what you have to do, get your thumb on the hammer, pull the trigger and ease that guy forward, let the trigger off about there and it will stop at that quarter cock position. And again, won't fire there. I took these two to the range uh, the other day. Uh, we shot some blazer ammo. Here's an empty box, right? This is not live ammo or anything. Um, I don't know if you can even read that there, but this is uh, 40 grains. CCI claims about uh, 1,235 feet per second for this ammo. Both firearms uh, 
seem to like it as well as anything else, and I have quite a bit of this, so that's what we use. So let's go ahead and take a look at the range footage, and we're just going to shoot a minimal amount of ammo because price of ammo, and, and this is just for demonstration purposes anyway, um, and you can see these guys in action. All right, I'll put in those clips, and we'll be right back. Okay, a voice over here on this still photo. Center target is the Ruger single six. There's 12 rounds there. Not too bad except for the one to the left and one to the right. Lower left corner is the rifle. Well, there you saw uh, how it went. Okay, the rifle shot really well. Um, you know, and uh, this little guy, not so much. I mean, we hit the paper, but that was about all we could say for that experience. Still fun to shoot this old girl though, and you know, it's not going anywhere. I, I thought about getting one of the new Ruger Wranglers. I've got a few other 22 pistols. I don't need another one. But anyway, um, it was it was fun to go to the range and shoot these guys. So again, we got the Henry Golden Boy, 20 inch octagonal barrel uh, in 22 short, long and long rifle. It's stamped right there on the on the barrel. Same way here, you could put short longs or long rifle through here but i've only shot long rifle through it all right um we're going to bring this to a close again i said i kind of wanted to keep these short so not a whole lot going on there um if you have uh, a henry uh, golden boy or a ruger single six let me know down in the co comments tell me how you like yours but from the viejo bench for now that's all she wrote <laughs>